Alright, welcome back guys. In this episode, I'm going to be tackling the fuel line installation on this 1977 911S. Owned this car for quite a while. I've got a ton of videos on it if you haven't seen them. I've basically been rebuilding the engine myself. I actually did not need to split the case because the compression and the leak down test turned out to be pretty good. I tried to do everything on a budget here, so I've rebuilt my air box, I've got new gaskets everywhere, I've replated things. This car has been kind of put on hold because I have been putting all my effort into the boat build and it didn't look like I made it this year. It's already September and the weather is turning. Winter is coming, I wanna build snowmobiles. I also have a Jag project that I'm working on, I'm really excited about. This thing has been so close to being done. I am sick of procrastinating. This is my number one priority. I want to drive this thing. So let's get to it. A lot of these fuel lines are NLA, so um, you pretty much have to get them custom made. There's a guy named Len that I'm going to be ordering his fuel lines, but the first step in order to do that is to measure the size of the fitting that's on the tank because they changed even in the same year. Before I do that, first I'm going to show you the state of my existing lines. All right, so here's the one of the factory lines. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of small cracks everywhere on that line. You know what, when that fuel line lets go and you have a hot engine, that's not something I'd like to experience. These are not simple fuel lines. You can't just go to AutoZone and, and order some fuel line. There are three pieces and they have some fittings that are a little odd. So anyway, the first step in replacing the fuel lines is jacking up the car and removing the belly pan to figure out what fitting size is on my fuel pump. So that's what we're gonna do first. All right, so here's the banjo bolt in question. I can see the end of this rubber hose is deteriorating. So I'm glad that I'm doing this. 20, so I'm guessing that's probably 19.8 technically. So this red guy goes for the fuel pump. Okay. Top hose, the elbow that's a 180, bottom hose, normal fitting. All right, I'm under the car in the front here. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at. So there's the fuel tank and there's the fuel pump and here's the steering rack. And what I'm gonna have to do is, those are the fuel lines, there's one there and there's one here. And they go over the steering rack and then into the tunnel right there. So the problem on these mid-year cars and the reason these fuel lines are so annoying is that as you can see right there, they're completely crimped. This rubber section, this rubber front portion is crimped onto that black plastic part. And there's not really a good way to replace the rubber, which you can see is cracking and coming apart. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna cut these right there. And then we're gonna hook the new plastic fuel lines onto the back ones and pull them forward through that grommet right there. I think I'm going to need to be able to move the steering rack in order to get these fuel lines out from above it. All right, now we're back up on top of the car, under the hood, and we're going to just loosen this guy, let there be light. This is the steering coupler that connects the steering column to the steering rack. Go. Um, let's cut the rubber part. Oh wow, okay. And the one further that way, 
goes into the fuel tank. Yeah, all right, we're gonna cut that one too. Let's see how much fuel comes out. Oh yeah. All right, this is the steering rack. And what I'm gonna do now is try to push in these grommets. Um, you just wanna push them into the tunnel here. All right, so now the name of the game is take these new lines and they came with this adapter and you thread it onto the back of these lines and then we go to the front and we pull this through. I'm gonna also wrap it with some tape as well, just to help it get through the tunnel. So like every how-to says you're supposed to wrap this with tape, but I, I have no freaking clue how they're supposed to do this. There's no, like look at, this is my finger. How are you going to wrap tape around something where you have this much clearance? Like it, that's a stupid idea. If anyone tells you to wrap tape around it, they must have like magic fingers. I don't, so. I tried to wrap tape around it, but it was half-hearted at best because there's no way to do it. So I'm just going to pull it through and hope for the best. So there is a little metal bracket right here. I don't, I don't even know if you can see it. My finger's touching it. But it's, a, it's welded onto the body and you need to thread the hoses through that. And it's a giant pain in the ass. I've unbolted everything I could on my steering rack to give some play here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not fun at all. And this is just the first hose. So, I'm not even going to show me trying to get the second one in there because I don't want to film 40 minutes of video and a bunch of swearing, so we're just going to skip ahead to that part. Once it's through. All right, dudes, done. I, I've really been putting that off because I really didn't want to do it. It was not a fun job. I knew it was not going to be a fun job. If you have the means, pay someone else to do it. Honestly, I think I'd rather pull a motor than do this job because it's just so, ugh. Maybe, maybe if I had a, a real lift, I'd feel a little bit differently. But anyway, that's all done. I think next steps on this thing, um, as far as I know, this is pretty much ready to go. I do need to get the exhaust and the oil crossover tube um, to work with each other. I'm not sure what I have is going to work. And then we're going to be starting to put on the... So next steps, we got to get this thing ready to go in. Um, as far as I know, this motor is pretty much ready to go. I need to adjust the tension on the fan slash alternator belt, and then we're going to throw on these absolutely huge billy boat they're gonna be way too big for this thing but uh they're gonna sound sweet i think and then we need to mate it up to the transmission and toss it back in here so we are getting pretty close definitely stay tuned on this project i think it's gonna sound amazing i honestly i think i'm i'm, I'm honestly at this point i think i'm more excited about how it's gonna sound than how it's gonna drive if you learned something from this, click the like button. If I did something wrong, let me know. I don't really have any idea what I'm doing, so I'm just sort of figuring it out. All right, cheers, boys. Stay tuned.